Now there's an important term we need to consider as we think about flexor tendon rehabilitation. And it is a term called work of flexion. Let's define that. It is the energy needed, or we could say the pull needed, or the power needed, to overcome res any resistance in order to flex the finger. And as we'll see, resistance can come from many different sources, some of which we can control and some of which we cannot control. There is, even with the most ideal flexor tendon repair, there will be internal resistance. There's friction between the surface of the tendon, and particularly where it's repaired, and the sheath that surrounds it. There's friction created by it simply being bigger and having a more difficult time fitting through the space created by the pulley. And of course, there can be significant issues with resistance related to adhesions of the tendon to the surrounding bed. Within zone one and two, the surrounding bed is the digital sheath. External resistance can be overwhelming. Joint stiffness, which can include stiffness related also to the presence of edema in the finger, can be overwhelming. Any adherence that has occurred of soft tissues, now I'm talking about soft tissues that are not the tendon, but perhaps the other layers of tissue that must move relative to one another during flexion have become adherent, and now flexion is more difficult. The other resistance that can occur is an antagonist muscle group. Some of that can be related to positioning, which we'll discuss, or it can be related to muscle tightness against which the flexor must pull in order to flex the finger. Now, from my view, the surgeon is responsible to a large extent, I would say 50%, to assure that the internal resistance is minimized because that has to do with the surgical technique of repair, the presence or absence of a pulley that creates a problem with gapping, things that have to do with the surgical repair. But we as therapists have the most control over the external resistance, which we should minimize. We should be able to work with a surgeon who provides 50% and we should then be able to take and add our 50% for an excellent final result. All we want is enough force to overcome resistance, but not enough to cause gapping or rupture. If you provide too much resistance too early, the risk of rupture increases. So as therapists, it's our job to absolutely minimize as much as we possibly can the amount of resistance that that repaired flexor tendon will encounter. So we're going to look at the ways we can decrease the work of flexion. But our conclusions about the definition are that it is the energy needed to overcome resistance to flexion. It can be internal resistance that the surgeon can greatly influence, which has to do with the surface of the tendon, or the bulk of the repair, or adhesions, or the pulley. There are many possible internal resistance factors, as there are external, which we as therapists have more influence over. It can be the joint that provides resistance, the soft tissue, or muscle. And what we're looking for is enough force to move the tendon, but not to rupture it. So it's very difficult to provide what I call an absolute protocol. There are so many variables that are different with each patient that a therapist who's treating flexor tendon patients 
needs a keen awareness of these variables and to modulate any protocol according to the variables.